One of the things that Fuji talks about in their new guide concept, and a lot of the same theories flow over into the KR concept, is to use the smallest guide that will get the job done. And a lot of people worry about knots going through smaller guide rings and other things. But what happens is when you use a small guide as a running guide, you accomplish a number of things. First of all, the overall weight in the top section of the rod when you use smaller guides is less. As soon as you take weight out of the tip of the rod, the rod responds better. The recovery time is faster. The, the, the sensitivity is higher. A lot of characteristics about the entire blank improve if you can keep this section light. So whether it's the new guide concept or the KR concept, with only three guides, we're down to what we call a running guide. If you can have your line flowing smoothly by the time you get to your choke point where the running guides begin, the whole top section of the rod stays lighter. And the lighter that top section is, the faster it will recover, the more accurate the rod becomes, the smoother the line flows so you add distance, and you definitely notice increased sensitivity when you keep the top section of the rod light. So whether it's the new guide concept or the KR concept, both will get you down to a point where your line is running smoothly along the blank and maintaining more lure energy and you'll have more sensitivity and normally when you use the concept you'll have to add a guide or two to keep the line off the blank under bend and that adds power to the rod. You want to make sure the line tracks the bend of the rod so you may have to add a guide or two to assure that that happens with a lower smaller guide. There's a lot of benefits to keeping the upper portion of the rod light using small low profile guides with a KR concept or the new guide concept. One of the most important things about using KR Concept guides, obviously high frame, small ring, is guide placement. We get a lot of questions about that. And it's really not that difficult. In, in nine out of 10 cases with a reel from a 2,500 to about a 4,000, you're gonna end up with a stripper somewhere between 19 and 22 inches. That's gonna work with the the cone that the line is creating down to the blank. To me, the most important thing is probably the size of this stripper. Obviously, a larger ring size is gonna move a little closer, a smaller ring size is gonna move a little further, but you're still only talking about probably a four inch range. So I look at the line I'm gonna be using, the size of the reel spool, and make a determination on the size of this stripper based on that information. Anytime I'm casting 20 pound braid, which is what I normally use in salt water, I'll go to a size 20 stripper. A lot of guys try to get down to a size 16 to keep everything as light as possible. But my experience tells me that a 20 stripper is better for 20 pound braid or mono up to about 12 pounds, maybe 14. 14, I would probably go to a 25. 30 pound braid or above, I would probably go to a 25 stripper. So don't worry so much about the range of where the stripper will fall. It's gonna be somewhere between 19 and 22 inches. Think in terms of your stripper size relative to the line size you're gonna choose and the size of the spool on your reel. Most of the time, a 20 is gonna do the job. 